The readings today can be summed up in the simple question we ask ourselves. Are we all in? In the first section of the Gospel, Jesus calls out the corrupt system whereby scribes use the faith for self-aggrandizement and self-enrichment by embezzling the most powerless members of their society, the widows. The scribe's selfishness leads to the downfall of others while the scribes themselves reap the benefits of wealth, status, and power. A better definition of selfishness there cannot be. But in the second section, Jesus observes the temple treasury, where the faithful come to give their tithe to the temple. The wealthy give from their excess, but the widow gives from her poverty. Now, is Jesus suggesting that everyone should give all of their money to the temple? This is unlikely, because in the very next chapter of this gospel, Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. Because this is not about money. It's about commitment. Over the past few weeks, we've been reading through the Gospel of Mark, and we see example after example of commitment. We met the rich man who was committed to following the law, and when he approached Jesus and asked him what else he could do, he couldn't take that next step to divest himself of material possessions and follow him. We heard about James and John who were ready to go all in if they got a seat next to Jesus in the kingdom. And last week, we heard about Bartimaeus, a wonderful encounter with the blind beggar who called out to Jesus. And when Jesus called him, he cast off his cloak, not in a dramatic flourish, but as a symbol of casting off his old life. That cloak kept him warm at night, shielded him from the sun, and protected him from the rain. And it was probably the most important thing that he owned And casting it aside was symbolic of casting aside his own life in trust and in faith. He was all in. And today we read about the widow who places two coins in the treasury. And she could have used those coins for one last meal, but she doesn't. She trusts. Mark is telling us through this series of encounters with different people in different walks of life, and in different places on their journey of faith, that being a follower of Christ requires commitment, real commitment, not just when it's convenient or sure. It means that having faith that Jesus has your back, even when you feel powerless and alone, perhaps especially then, and it requires us to be all in. But the thing is, we're not good at total commitment. We like to hold back a little, just in case. We want to be all in, but it's not easy. We like to keep that little escape clause because our life experience tells us that it's not unusual to be disappointed. But Jesus never disappoints. Nevertheless, we hold on to things that stand in our way. That is, until we find a place in our lives that we realize that we're not in control of things at all. And it's in those moments of helplessness, powerlessness, and desperation where we truly understand how best to surrender and to go all in. We see that in the first reading, where Elijah is sent to Zarephath by God to a widow that has been commanded to feed him. For context, the region is undergoing a terrible drought, and food and water are quite scarce. But when Elijah arrives to the widow, he finds out that she has only enough flour and oil for one last meal. And then starvation awaits her and her son. Elijah says, do not be afraid. And she does as he asks. And God provides her household with flour and oil until the drought breaks. So we have to ask ourselves, Are we all in? I know that I have a lot of work to do towards that goal because I struggle with surrendering, mostly because it's hard for me to discern when I should let go and let God do something or when God is calling me to do something. Am I supposed to take action or am I supposed to surrender? This is especially difficult when I'm on autopilot and not really thinking about it and I'm just reacting to circumstances. 
The fact is that discerning what God wants us to do and what he wants to do for us is really tough. Throughout his ministry, Jesus works with others to accomplish great things, despite not needing any human help whatsoever. He wants us to be active participants in the kingdom. We're all on a mission, and figuring that out is ongoing work. Even St. Francis struggled with this, because when God told him in a dream to fix his church, Francis took it very literally and went out to get bricks and mortar. It took three dreams for Francis to figure out that God was asking him something a little bit bigger than brickwork. So how are we supposed to figure out what God wants us to do? We start with prayer, listening to what God wants in places in our hearts and in our minds. This is most definitely where we can give from our poverty because the one thing few of us have in abundance is time. If we want to be all in, we have to not only give up what we value, but we have to surrender the things that keep us from being better disciples. We have to let go of the things that hold us back, like resentment and grudges. We have to let go of the things within us that keep us from having a deeper relationship with Jesus. And maybe that means going to confession to surrender some of the guilt that we feel when we're not at our best. Being all in means giving the Lord control over things that we value and taking on the things that he values trusting that his love for us is far beyond our understanding. The passage that we read today is at a transition point in Mark's gospel. It is at the end of his teaching ministry. Jesus is asking his disciples, us, to trust and follow him completely. In the chapters that follow this very reading, Jesus begins his journey to the cross because only he could reconcile us to the Father to rebuild that relationship that we tore down. Jesus asked this level of commitment from us because he has shown that level of commitment towards us. Receiving the Eucharist is a continual sign of that commitment, his desire to be with us always. We're here today because Jesus is all in for us.